What's up guys? Welcome to episode 2 of Defense Against the Dark Arts. Today we're going to be having a look at application shimming, how to maintain persistence and how to pop a shell using application shimming, and then we're going to use Elasticsearch to hunt for application shimming. Let's get straight to it. So, application shimming. What is application shimming? Application shimming is when an attacker already has a compromised machine and needs to establish persistence in the network. Okay, so how this is done is an attacker will find an already installed application on the compromised machine, create a shim database for it, most likely using an inject DLL function or a redirect exe function, something along those lines. They will install that SDB file onto the target machine and whenever the user runs that application, he will get a shell back. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So to do this attack, you're going to need two things. You're going to need a target machine. We have a Windows 10 virtual machine over here, and then you're going to need an attacking machine. I am using Parrot OS over here. You need to create a malicious DLL file. Okay, so we use this command and we have created a win.dll file using the interpreter payload the listening host, there's my IP address over there, and then the port that this DLL is going to go out from, port 8080. Now, we also need to set up a handler for this payload. So I've set up the listening host, I've set up the port. Make sure in, in Metasploit, this is a quick tip, make sure this payload here always matches the one that you created the, the payload with, just to make sure it always works. And then you're going to hit exploit, and now we are listening on this IP address, and on this port for anyone or anything that executes this DLL file. Okay, so now that we're back on our Windows 10 machine, you can see I have already transferred our malicious DLL file over here to the desktop. Please note, you, do, you don't have to actually do all of this on the compromised machine. A lot of times you would get the STB file created and everything off of this machine, and then you'll bring it in, inject it, and then run it. That's typically how attackers do it. But we're just going to be doing it all on one machine just to make this video easier. So we're going to be injecting WinRAR today. I can see WinRAR is installed, and we're going to attack that application. So we're going to open up Compatibility Administrator. We're going to go to custom databases, create new application fix, call it WinRAR, Win, oh, WinRAR, <clears throat> find the executable, which will be over here, WinRAR.exe, sit next, don't have to change anything there, inject DLL parameters. So here you are going to put in the path of our malicious DLL. Okay, that's it over there. Say okay, say next, hit finish, you're done. Save, we can call this WinRAR2 or whatever, they, well, you can call this whatever you want and say okay, WinRAR, that's all good. Save it to the desktop just to make life easy and we should be good. Cool. There, we have our winrar.sdb file installed. So now we are going to go ahead and install this using sdbinst.exe. Okay, so you're going to sdb inst.exe winrar.stb. What this is going to do is take the custom shim that we've just created and install it onto this target machine, just like you would any other application. And you see WinRAR2 installation is complete. So let's just quickly go have a look at control panel. <clears throat> Programs and features. See WinRAR2 is installed as a program over there. Close that up. So now what we want to do, let's unzip something. Okay, we don't have to open WinRAR. Let's yeah, let's 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 extract ping info view. Extract yeah, let's bring this over. And you can see as we extracted it, we have our interpreter session. Get Ewood or Bob. That's awesome. We can open up a shell and we can do whatever we want on this guy's machine. But 
Now, how do we detect this? Okay, there's a couple of things that you can do. So in the first episode of Defense Against the Dark Arts, I told you guys to build a lab, use Elasticsearch, install the Elastic Agent on your endpoints, and this is exactly why. We're gonna go and dive into Elasticsearch now and have a look for this. Okay, so this is my little threat hunting dashboard in Elasticsearch. By the end of the series, you should be able to put together something very similar to this. Now, obviously, None of these have any alerts because we haven't performed any of these attacks yet, but we have done some application shimming and we can see that over here. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this and have a look. We go to the discover module within Elasticsearch. I've already created the query that we're gonna to use today. We're basically looking for any process and event with the process name stbinst.exe. Now, quick disclaimer, this isn't the only way to perform application shimming. There are other applications out there like STB Explorer. Actually, there's a couple on GitHub. So your homework, go in there and look for these applications, put them into these queries so you can hunt for them in your network. Don't only rely on just this guy over here. So let's have a look at the event that we generated earlier. We scroll down, we can see the command line ran, stbinst.exe, winrar.stb was installed. Okay, now this is out of the ordinary. It's not really normal. It's not something you see every day. So we need to investigate this. Let's go into the elastic security module over here. We'll open up the detections tab. Once this is opened, we can scroll down and we can see that there is a malware detection alert. Okay, let's analyze this event. The explorer.exe explorer opened up winrar which then triggered run DLL32 with a network association. Let's open that up and have a look at it. We can see that there was a destination address. This is the IP address of our Parrot server or Parrot attack box, whatever you want to call it, with this destination port that we set and specified within the malicious DLL. Okay, so this is when your incident response um, program will kind of kick in. You get all of the network engineers and you'll kind of block this IP address, and you'll lock down this machine, clean it up, make sure that they haven't spread, look for any other connections to this IP address, okay? And then let's quickly have a look down. Remember we opened a shell within Meterpreter and it caught that as well. So yeah, that's pretty much a very simple, but a nice example of what an attack tree looks like in Elasticsearch. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. If you enjoy content like this, please consider smashing that subscribe button and also smashing that like button, but also, most importantly, have yourselves a rad day. Cheers.